Hi guys, it's Reza from Cat Space, and this video blog is about validation of your results with SolidWorks simulation. So the case study I've chosen for this video blog is a simple shaft that has got a 30 millimeter diameter. So I'm just making the model in uh, my SolidWorks now and just quickly making it because it's a pretty simple shape. So I'll make it in here. So then with a length of 100 millimeter, I'll create a shaft. The material I'm going to choose here is alloy steel and these are the um, specification of this material that I'm using including its thermal expansion that I have over here. So let's get into SolidWorks simulation by activating the add-in first and then the next thing you need to do is to create a new study. So the new study I can call this thermal stress and in thermal stress just bear that in mind even though it's going to be a thermal it's going to be under static analysis because I can use a thermal or temperature as a boundary condition. So let's take a look. My material has been uh, came across uh, here. So the fixtures which I need to make is actually they're very important here because you want to see how this shaft is going to be expanded actually and radially. So in order to do so, I need to create a an axis. So an axis can be created by a face of a cylindrical shape as easy as this. So I've got my axis now. For the fixture, I just don't want to make too many restrictions on my shaft over here. So I choose this edge only to get as a reference. Of course, my axis, and as you can see, everything turns to um, radial coordination system. So I avoid the shaft to be circumferentially displaced or rotated, let's say, from this edge. And I don't want this to be actually moved as well. So I don't want this edge to go up and down in X direction. So accepting these boundary conditions, the last thing I need to apply is a thermal road or a temperature. So if I want to heat this shaft by 200, so I have to put 200 here, but don't forget about the ambient temperature, which is going to be 25. So I can straight away put plus 25, and this is going to be my temperature. And this is a very important part of the analysis. So you need to add the temperature to the whole solid body of your shaft. If you do the faces, it means that the temperature is going to be applied on the elements on those faces. And that's usually not correct because we are dealing with steady state condition. And after a while, um, our temperature and our heat actually transfer through the whole shaft and the whole shaft is going to stay at this temperature which is 225. If I want to make sure that the ambient temperature is set correctly, I can go to the properties of my study and reference temperature at zero strain should be set to 25 or um, your preference. So without even taking a look at the mesh settings, I can run the analysis and the analysis is giving me these um, different sort of figures here. So very quick tip for displacement which I've chosen here to be on X direction, which is this way, I could see that I've got a number but a better way is to actually use the advanced option and grab my axis so that it turns to radial displacement. That makes my job a bit easier because I can reference them correctly. And as you can see the way it represents is now a radial displacement. That's very useful in here. Displacement number two is all about if I choose the same method and if I choose the advanced options and my axis over here, that's a tangential displacement. I expect this, this to be zero because I restricted the edge uh, for the model not to actually rotate around that edge. So for the actual one, although I restricted that edge, but the other part of the model could move and I can see that as well. So let's take a look at the um, radial displacement. I've got this value as 0.039. And on this one, I've got the actual as minus 0 0.026, 0 0.26. So if I animate this, you can see that it's actually showing me exactly what is the, um, like the shaft is going to displace or deform. So if I go back 
to this other one and just animate this you can see that this is going to be the expansion in radio and the other guy which was the third one if I go to the normal direction which is this one and I can animate this of course this is going to be an exaggeration uh, my part is not going to be the form um, like this uh, as in like it's, it's a bit of um, exaggeration so you can definitely check that out and you can see that the deform shape is 38.46 times exaggerated so let's take a look at the hand calcs so I've prepared a document over here for you to take a look so the verification as you can see here I use the theory um, to validate my results that gives me the exact results of um, difference in radio or radius displacement as 0 .3, 0 0.039 millimeter which is exactly the value I got and for the length is the same thing so this is the method that you can use to validate your results with SOLIDWORKS simulation for thermal stress